chapter eight of your economic survey volume two uh, have two parts that is industry and infrastructure. So we'll be today we'll be uh, starting infrastructure section. Uh, infrastructure, if you see the last three or four years trend, it is a very important topic. Okay, so on an average, you expect three questions from infrastructure, and most of the infrastructure questions are uh, being asked from the economic survey only. So the the, the coming uh, uh, parts, part one, two, three, or even four of uh, infrastructure, you make sure that. Uh, you be uh, like what is economic survey has been covered. Uh, you ensure that it has been uh, means uh, be very clear, and you make a comparison also regarding the many government schemes and initiatives being taken. Okay, now regarding the uh, infrastructure sector. Okay, try to understand that this is a sector where we require huge investment. So if if we want to achieve a sustainable economic growth for the coming future, okay. The government as well as the private uh, <coughs> players, both foreign as well as domestic private players, have to make huge investment uh, in infrastructure. So, for to attain sustainable economic growth, infrastructure and as well as the investment on in infrastructure plays a very crucial role. Now, uh, the survey, 2017-18 uh, survey, uh, starts by uh, telling the importance of infrastructure. It says that in order to attain high and sustainable economic growth, uh, there is a ne very important uh, uh, necessity that the government have to increase the investment in infrastructure mainly on transportation. So transportation infrastructure is very important, okay. Energy, communication, housing and sanitation and urban infrastructure, the stress have been given on these uh, areas. So it says that, okay, so it's not only bringing growth, sustainable growth or high growth, it also ensure employment opportunities, both directly and indirectly. So as the investment on infrastructure increase, there will be increase in, in uh, employment opportunities, both direct and indirect employment opportunities there. So the, the government, the present government aim is to invest more on quality infrastructure so that uh, India can be converted into an advanced an advanced, inclusive, and a just economy. This is how the survey starts. Okay. Now, this is a very, very, very important. Uh, see, I told you that uh, in the last few years, UPSC is now consistently asking about uh, the reports or the index released by global organizations. Okay. So there is a very important report released in 2017 by World Bank. Okay. So this topic I already discussed in our question answer discussion that. Uh, the, the report called logistic, so the index called logistic performance index, okay. So please, those who have not watched the video on logistic performance index, just watch that video and see the, the, the indicators used to measure this logistic performance index, okay. And this index, logistic performance index is released by World Bank. So the, the specialty of this index is that it is released uh, to, uh, means biannually. Only in two years only this report will be released and it is released by the World Bank. So there have been an improvement in the logistic performance index. Okay, so India's ranking have jumped from uh, 58th rank in 2014 to 36th rank in 2016. Okay, so this World Bank also have said that okay, providing quality physical infrastructure, uh, in, in providing quality f f physical infrastructure by the government of India in the la last few years have been phenomenal. That's the reason. That's the reason why, uh, reason why there have been an improvement in the rank. So what you need to do is that make sure that you are thorough with this uh, logistic performance index, the, the parameters on which this index is uh, developed by the World Bank. Okay. So I'll what I'll, I'll attach a video of that uh, uh, means that this logistic performance index video will be attached with this uh, infrastructure video. Okay. So make sure that you are thorough with the logistic performance index, okay. So World Bank has said that, okay, uh, infrastructural development, infrastructural development is critical for India, especially in, in, in delivering growth, reducing poverty as well as addressing our broader development goals. So this is mentioned world by the World Bank in its uh, 2016 logistic performance index report, okay. So in this, what I will suggest you is that in this uh, point, the most important point is the 2016 Logistic Performance Index Report, 
and who releases it, what are the parameters on which logistic index uh, performance index is been uh, constructed. Now, uh, there are certain relationship between uh, investment on infrastructure and per capita income, okay. So, uh, what the survey says that a safe, interconnected and quality infrastructure is not only the key driver of economic growth, but as well as for increasing per capita income, okay. Uh, and what survey says that among the India's peer groups, emerging countries, uh, if you compare, see, if you compare the per capita India's per capita income countries, peer groups, okay, India has performed significantly better in constructing quality infrastructure. So, when India is been compared with the peer group with the same per capita income, India have performed well in constructing quality infrastructure. That's why there have been improvement in our logistic performance index, okay. Now, India's per cap, even though India's per capita income is low, India is far ahead of many emerging economies in terms of providing quality transportation related infrastructure, okay. So, these are the statements UPC can ask directly from the economic survey, cut copy statement, okay. So, normally we think that, okay, uh, we know that our per capita income is low, but and because of the uh, greater importance the uh, current government have given for infrastructure investment, there have been uh, a better investment and improvement in growth mainly because of uh, by especially in providing quality infrastructure. So, be very clear with this point, okay. Now, uh, the what survey says that the benefit of industry trade as well as the success of Make in India and other initiatives uh, can only be gained if there is a greater, again, see there is a scope for, say, we, when you compare with our peer countries, there have been improvement in India's uh, quality physical infrastructure, but there is greater need to improve on these uh, both hard and soft mainly logistic infrastructure okay so that has been suggested by the economic survey now uh, what survey says that okay the physical infrastructure mainly roads railway sport civil aviation telecom all you have to study in detail about road railway sport civil aviation telecom uh, have uh, opened up a new set of opportunities for developing our economy. The government have taken almost several initiatives to develop all these physical infrastructure which is being discussed in detail in this survey will be coming in different parts discussing it, okay. Now another important, see, now I told you logistic performance index is very important. The second, another very important, see, I somewhere uh, it's an intuition that I feel that you may get a question on uh, global infrastructure outlook, okay. So, in order to know more about global infrastructure outlook, even though I'll, uh, what survey has mentioned, I'll discuss it, we, please refer the our telegram channel, especially global infrastructure outlook as well as this global infrastructure hub, okay. Now, this global infrastructure hub have been set up by the G20, okay. So, global infrastructure hub is an initiative G20 set up in 2014. And this global infrastructure hub releases a report what is called as global infrastructure outlook, okay. So, UPSC can ask this question, who releases global infrastructure outlook? It is global infrastructure hub, which is an initiative of G20. So, uh, they will they will not link you, they may not bring global infrastructure hub in the question. They may give which of the following groupings or international institutions is associated with global infrastructure outlook. It is G20 only. So, G, G. So, you link it like global and G20, okay. Like that you can, because many facts and reports are there. So, in order to ensure that you don't confuse, you use some tricks, okay. So, anyway, uh, this you gave, you please revise it also regarding this global infrastructure. So, the second most important point after this logistic performance index, that is regarding global infrastructure outlook, okay. So, G20 initiative. And what this outlook says that in India, uh, in India, especially the rising income level as well as economic prosperity is likely to further uh, drive demand for infrastructure investment in India over the next 20 years. So, over the next 20 years, there will be a greater demand for infrastructure investment mainly because of rise in income level as well as economic prosperity in India. And it's this outlook says that, the outlook says that uh, we require for the next 25 years or till 2040, the year 2040, we require only for infrastructure investment, we require 4.5 trillion of investment in infrastructure, 
especially to improve economic growth and community well-being. So as per this outlook, global infrastructure outlook, we require till 2040 an investment of 4.5 trillion, 4.5 trillion, okay. Now it, the, the, the what this uh, outlook says that, okay, going by the current trend, India can only attain 3.9 trillion for infrastructure investment till for, uh, 2040. So India require 4.5 trillion, but if you go by, if you look by the current trend, India can at maximum get only 3.9 trillion for infrastructure investment. So there is a gap, investment gap is there. There is, for India's case, there's an infrastructure investment gap is there to uh, somewhere around 526 billion. So this has to be addressed in the coming years, okay. So, and what, again, what the survey says that, even though the present government have taken several initiatives to improve uh, infrastructure investment, now also there is a massive underinvestment in infrastructure. There is still underinvestment in infrastructure uh, until the recent past, okay. So there have been underinvestment in recent past. Now the focus, even though the focus have shifted, see, now the present, so please uh, clear with it, okay. Uh, before 2014, okay, there have been underinvestment, but the, the the trend have changed in the last few years, and the government started investing more on uh, infrastructure. But even though the the increase in infrastructure is increasing, that's not sufficient. There are many hurdles uh, infrastructure investment is facing. Okay, so there have been shortfall in in uh, in investment, infrastructure investment, mainly because of certain problems, okay. So this can be a potential question, okay. What are the major reasons for shortfall in infrastructure investment? What are the major reasons? Since economic survey has uh, highlighted three major problems. One is, is the collapse of public-private partnership model. Okay, so the public-private, in India, this model, especially infrastructure, have not, has not been successful, okay. It have, especially in power and telecom projects, it has collapsed. So that's one reason for shortfall in investment. The second is that uh, the, the, the stressed balance sheet of private companies, mainly those companies, infrastructure companies. So second is stressed balance sheet of, so there is huge debt for these private infrastructure companies. And third is the issues related to land and forest clearance. So these are the three major problems affecting investment in infrastructure, okay. So what the survey says that the, the present need is to fill this infrastructure investment gap, okay. So there is a gap in infrastructure investment and this can be managed through different sources mainly by uh, financing from private investment. Now we have, the government have exclusively set up a, a fund, a something like in the form of a sovereign wealth fund, what is called as uh, National Infrastructure and Investment Fund. So this was the 2017 prelims question. In 2017, uh, one of the questions from infrastructure was National Inv Infrastructure and Investment Fund, okay. So uh, the government, it's, it's basically uh, a government initiative where 49% uh, equity is owned by the government even though the half of the investment will be provided by the government, okay. So again, this is important, please revise it, okay. And already we have a video on National Investment Infrastructure Fund which I released last year, before last year prelims and uh, luckily question came from this topic. And uh, when there are many institutions like uh, the new institutions like Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, uh, New Development Bank, where India play a major role. In Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, India is the second largest shareholder after China. And in the BRICS New Development Bank, India is having an equal shareholding. So all, so from all these sources, especially this New Development Bank and Asian Infrastructure, Infrastructure Bank have a a special goal on ensuring, so they will invest more on sustainable development projects and uh, sustainable infrastructure projects, okay. So from these sources, the government have to uh, bring, I means I have to bring financing so that that infrastructure investment gap can be reduced or can be managed, okay. So this is what the survey says about the uh, infrastructure sector. Now, 2017-18 survey have discussed in detail about one of the most important infrastructure sector that is road, road sector, okay. So there are few important, so in the, uh, in the, uh, the, the earlier point which I have discussed, general point about infrastructure, two things only you need to revise. 
One is regarding this global infrastructure outlook as well as this logistic performance index. Now in the road sector also there are few important schemes as well as certain important points to be noted down, okay. Now regarding the road or uh, road transport, if you look into the presently road transport is the dominant mode of both passenger as well as a uh, freight traffic in India, okay. So both traffic, uh, it's a dominant mode of transport in India both in terms of uh, so the survey says that it's a dominant mode of transport in terms of traffic as well as in terms of contribution to the national economy. Uh, so this road is not only facilitating the movement of goods and uh, passengers, it also plays a key role in equitable socio-economic development, uh, uh, especially across the different regions of the country, okay. So uh, again it continue like this, okay, uh, the easy access accessibility to roads flexibility of operation, door-to-door -door service and reliability have earned this road transport a greater significance in both passenger and free traffic in relation to other modes of transport, okay. So in relation to other modes of transport like railways uh, or uh, air, uh, this is uh, have become an important mode mainly because of ease in access, it's easily accessible flexibility of operation and door to door service as well as reliability, okay. So this is the most important mode of transport in India that is road sector, okay. And regarding there are few, few factual information but very important, okay. Uh, India has one of the largest road network. So India's road uh, network size is uh, 56 point one or, or almost 56 lakh kilometer. So India's road network is 56 lakh kilometer. 56.17 uh, lakh kilometer exactly. So India's road network consists of national highways, expressways, expressways also is included under national highway, state highways, major district road, other district roads as well as village road or rural roads. Now in, in, in the case of inland, inland free transport, free, we are talking about free transport, road share is more than railways. So this is something different compared to other countries like China and USA. So in relation to freight, inland freight traffic, inland freight traffic, uh, road share is more than railways and other modes of transportation as compared to Russia, China. When you compare with Russia, China and USA, India's road transport on free traffic is more than other modes of transport, mainly uh, railways. Now this just have an idea regarding the composition of the length of uh, uh, national and state railways and other roads, okay. Now I told you around 56.17 lakh kilometer is the road network and if you see that national highway and state highways contribution is something like 2 percentage and 3 percentage. Other roads contribute, mainly the rural roads is the major component of our road network, okay, not national highway or state highway. So just have an idea regarding it. Now there is a comparison between 2001 data and the 2016 data of the total road length, okay. So in 2001 there have been only 33 lakh kilometer and this 33 lakh kilometer of road was uh, catering to 55 million vehicles. So in 2001, 55 million vehicles was, uh, vehicle used this 33 lakh kilometer but in 16 that is in after 15 years the total road length have only increased by from 33 lakh to 56 lakh kilometer. But the total number of vehicles have grown four times. So in the last 15 years, the number of vehicles have grown four times to 229 million, but the size of the roads, road network have increased from 33 lakh to not even doubled 56 lakh kilometer. So because of that, there have been higher road density in India. And one important point regarding the composition of vehicle, uh, I told you in 15 years, four times vehicle have increased. The, the increase is mainly due to two wheelers and passenger cars. Two wheelers, passenger cars, jeep and taxis have increased on Indian roads while the share of public transport like buses and as well as goods vehicles contracted. So in this 15 year period, there have been increase in passenger means uh, two wheelers as well as passenger cars but there have been decrease in public transport as well as goods vehicles. So this is information uh, conveyed regarding the road uh, networks in India, okay. Now there have been uh, a, 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 a constant uh, improvement or in, converse, in converting 
uh, state highways to national highways, okay. So national highways, including expressways in India, account for, this is a very important fact, I already discussed, okay. National highways, including expressway, constitute only 2 percentage of the total road length, okay. So regarding the conversion of state highways to national highways, what the survey says that there have been proposal by the state government to convert state highways, 64,000 kilometer of state roads as national highways. Uh, but the, the Ministry of Road Transport, okay, uh, has declared about only 10,000 kilometer of road as new national highways. And out of that, 3,000, 3,180 kilometer of state highways have been converted to national highways. Okay, it's a fact, not that important, okay. But just have an idea. Why I'm discussing is that, so you cannot take any risk in relation to economic survey. So if the survey have highlighted certain facts, just have an idea. Don't mug up these facts. Just have an idea that uh, there is a, uh, like the conversion rate of state highways to national highways is comparatively lesser. Now regarding the India's road density, I told you by looking into the last 15 years, okay, the number of vehicles have increased, but the road have not even doubled when the number of vehicles have uh, increased by four times. So India is having one of the highest road density in the world with 1.6 kilometer per uh, uh, per square kilometer of area, which is higher than Japan, USA, China, Brazil, and other, and Russia. Okay, so India's road density is higher than any other country. Uh, now, regarding the India's surface road length, in the surface area road length, in India we are having 61% of the total road length. So, the surface road length is 61% of the total road length, which is much uh, lower than uh, UK, Korea, and China, Russia and China, okay. So, the surface road length, which is 61 percentage is lower than the other countries, major countries. It's again a fact, just have an idea about it, okay. Now, uh, the government focus on constructing national highways in Indian state have, have a greater impact, okay. So, the national highways, constructing national highways have a greater impact on trade as well as per capita income, okay. So, these statement be very careful about it okay so national in, national highways the increase in the national highways or construction of national highways have made a big impact in trade as well as per capita income okay so uh, the survey is showing two interesting relationship in, in this context okay so this a very 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 important point okay two important relationship survey have highlighted especially in relation to construction of national highways and trade and per capita income. So one is that if the density of national highways is higher, if the density of national highway is higher, then there will be higher industry trade. So the industry trade, the trade, in the, the, the trade percentage of uh, state GDP, that is state GDP is gross state domestic product, okay. So the state GDP share of trade or industry trade is higher when the density of national highways is higher. So this is one relationship. What it says that the trade component, the trade share in state GDP is higher when the national highways which pass through that particular state density is higher. That is one relationship. It's a very important relationship, note down. And it also says that so that is the relationship between uh, national highway density and trade. Second is in relation to Per capita income, there is a positive relationship exists between density of national highways and per capita income of Indian states. What it says that higher the density of national highways, higher the per capita state GDP. Okay, so you just remember that whenever the national highways density increases, by particular state trade 2 percentage of GDP increases and per capita income of that particular state increases if the uh, density in um, on national highways or through which that particular state uh, state passes increases its density. Okay, so two very very important relationship. Okay, UPC can confuse you by changing these statements. Just have an idea about it. Okay, now what is the uh, the survey says that okay the relatively developed states, relatively developed states like Maharashtra, Karnataka, Kerala, and Goa, which have higher density of national highways and state highways. Uh, uh, have, is showing this trend, okay. So these are relatively developed states which is having higher density is showing this interesting, two interesting relationship. 
Now, there have been a policy uh, by the government to, uh, uh, for construction of other public works department road, especially district road, okay. So other, uh, what survey says that this other public works department road consists of district road as well as a rural road and this other, uh, this district road and rural roads are developed by the state government, especially the public work department of the state government or union territories, okay. And these roads, that is uh, district roads and rural roads play important road, role in providing villages. District roads and rural roads play a very important role in providing villages in, a, in, 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 the, in accessibility, especially for transportation of agricultural and other products to nearby markets as well as access to schools and medical centers, okay. So I told you this road play a very important role in regional connectivity as well as regional development, especially backward areas, okay. The share of uh, this other public works department road which serve as the main roads of intra district movement has uh, decreased over the period of time, okay. The share of this main roads, how, what service is it has decreased, okay. Now, if you look into the largest share in the road network in India, okay, the highest road network, the, the contribution is from rural road, okay. Rural road constitute 61 percentage followed by the district roads. See here, other than rural roads, what are the other PWD roads? That is, district roads is having the second highest share, that is 20 percentage. Urban roads, 9 percentage. Project roads, 5 percentage. State highways, 3 percentage. And national highways, 2 percentage. So, in the, uh, if you look into the data available till now, National highways to the total road network is 2 percentage, state highways is 3 percentage. But rural roads constitute the largest share that is with 61 percentage. Fact, but just have an idea about it. Now, this uh, in, in, in the case of rural road, the government have a very important scheme what is called as Pradhan Mandri Gram Sadak Yojana. Please revise it. Economic survey have not mentioned in detail about this scheme, but it says that, okay, this Yojana, Pradhan Mandri Gram Sadak Yojana, it is a centrally sponsored scheme and it tried to connect habitations with rural roads, okay. So, as the term suggests, Gram, okay, Sadak Yojan, okay. So, so the scheme is for, uh, in, means providing rural roads to the uh, un unconnected areas, okay. So, the district roads provide the critical function of linkage between main roads and rural roads. So, just revise this Pradhan Mandri Gram Sadak Yojana, its major features, okay. Uh, again, uh, among within the Indian states, there is a positive relationship which we have all again uh, we discussed. There is a positive relationship between gross state domestic product per capita and density of even in the case of national highways, we discussed that there is a positive relationship. Again, for other public works department road also, there is a positive relationship between uh, the density of other public work department road that is mainly district road and rural roads as well as the per capita state GDP, state GDP is per capita. Now, uh, what the survey says that there is a need for developing this other public works department road, mainly district road and rural road, including district roads through special projects as well as so as to provide access to district quarters, headquarters, market hubs and to facilitate connectivity to state highways, thereby enhancing economic activity. So, the, the there is a separate section for uh, uh, this district road and rural roads showing the significance of uh, the these roads, district roads and rural roads play in increasing the per capita income of respective states as well as connecting the rural areas as well as increasing the economic activities in these unaccessible regions. And here in this context, this Pradhana Mandri Gram Sadat Yojana play a very important role in increasing the rural roads in the country. And just have an idea about the composition, rural roads constitute 61 percentage share of the total road network. Now, uh, a survey also have, see the big, this is one of the biggest problem road sector faces that there are many stalled projects and NPAs in road sector, especially during 2014. Many of the uh, issues have been addressed by the present government, okay. So, what the survey says that as per the latest data uh, of September 2017, there are uh, 1,263 ongoing monitored projects across different sectors in that, especially infrastructure projects, 482 projects is in road, transport and highways with a cost of uh, 3 lakh crore, approximately 3.1 lakh crore and out of this 482 road projects, 
43 projects is facing cost overrun as well as post cost overrun and 74 projects is facing time overrun that results in a uh, big problem to complete the project. So some of these projects under different phases are under National Library Development Program. So the reason for delay cost overrun or uh, time overrun is mainly due to problems like this is very very important okay. What are the reasons for uh, project delays or stalled projects in the road sector that is mainly because of land acquisition problem, utility shifting, then the poor performance of contractors, environment, forest or wildlife clearances, then the re regarding the issue with the railways especially in relation to road over bridge or road under bridge, then public agitations for additional facilities as well as this contractual disputes with the contractors. These are the problems mentioned in because of this means the reason for this stalled projects which results in cost overrun and time overrun. And if you look into the share of non-performing assets uh, for uh, the loans given by bank to road sector is the NPA in road sector have drastically increased from 1.9 percentage in 2012-13. So in the four in the six years time period NPA in road sector have increased from 1.9 percentage to 20.3 percentage. This is the biggest concern okay in a road uh, sector okay. Now what are the measures taken by the government for reviving the stalled projects in India okay. So this ministry of road transport and highways which is the major ministry in, in relation to uh, road construction especially national highways and expressways okay and so these two places this ministry of road transport and highways as well as national highway authority of India have been constantly monitoring these stalled projects. So what they have done is uh, wherever physical verification is where physical completion is established a one, find, a one time fund infusion is done by national highway authority of India especially to revive stalled projects and the funds are also being arranged through common fund available with, with national highway authority of India for development of roads. And further in order to expedite uh, completion of delayed projects regular meetings with project developers, state government and contractors have been done and these steps have ensured uh, as well as an, uh, other than that the problems like streamlining of land acquisition and environment clearances, exit for equity investors, premium reschedulement, revamping of dispute resolution mechanism, frequent reviews at various levels have been done. So these are the measures taken mainly by the Ministry of Road Transport and National Highway Authority of India. So because of these steps taken by uh, what happened uh, is that along with that a new model very very important model which we'll discuss in detail because survey have done okay. So earlier the main the road construction was done through this engineering procurement and construction as well as this uh, BOT model both had its own problems. So uh, as part of reviving the uh, stalled road projects the government have introduced a new model for developing roads what is called as hybrid annuity model instead of this EPC model which we will discuss in detail. So introducing hybrid annuity model is one of the steps to revive the stalled projects in, in relation to road sector okay. Now again other than this hybrid annuity model other steps like monetization of projects through tall operate in transfer model then there have been securitization of tall revenue adopting infrastructure investment trust route concept okay other innovative finance like uh, funding from LIC long term pension funds have been taken to attract fresh capital for the uh, for completion of this operational or for uh, for the uh, getting capital for these operational projects. So these are the other steps being taken. So because of all these prop active policy intervention by the Ministry of Road Transport and highways as well as this national highway adopt of India what happened was a very good sign have happened around 80, 88 percentage of these projects have now been put on track and uh, most of them have been either re-engineered or restructured and the number of stalled projects have now reduced to two three that's a positive sign. Now the as per the survey as per the latest data available number of stalled projects is now road projects is now only three because of these steps taken by the government okay. Now very 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 important uh, uh, scheme associated with Bharat uh, means uh, road sector you basically can ask this question what is this Bharat Mal this Bharat Mala Yojana okay. So Bharat Mala Pariyojana okay what is this Bharat Mala program or Bharat Mala Pariyojana. So it's it's basically a, a, a scheme or program uh, 
uh, for the highway sector. So this scheme, which has been implemented by the Ministry of Road Transport, is an umbrella program, a new umbrella program for highway sector. Okay, this is a stress unit. This is a scheme for the highway sector by the Ministry of Road Transport that focuses on optimizing efficiency of freight as well as passenger movement across the country by bridging the critical infrastructure gaps through interventions like development of economic corridors, inter corridors, feeder roads, national corridor efficiency improvement, then border and international connectivity roads, coastal and port connectivity roads and greenfield express. Okay, So there is another initiative for a ports what is called as Sagar Mala uh, project. Okay, So don't get confused this is Bharat Mala, Bharat Mala is for highway projects, Sagar Mala is for port, we will discuss in the uh, sh shipping and uh, other sector in port we will discuss regarding Sagar Mala also. Now regarding the objective of this Bharat Mala Pariyojana is that is to achieve optimum resource allocation, optimum resource allocation for a holistic highway development. So holistic highway development, so this scheme is exclusively for highway development, okay. So that's the most important thing through these initiatives. Now in the phase one of around 24,800 kilometers have been proposed under this Bharat Mala Pariyojana. It in, so in the phase one, it also, so a 24,000 kilometer have been, pro, will be constructed under this Pariyojana as well as 10,000 balanced road work under the National Highway Development Program is also included under the phase one. So approximately 10,000 balanced roads as well as new roads of 24,800 kilometer will be developed under this scheme. And the estimated outlay under for the phase one is, is, is 5,35,000 crore. See the investment required, 5,35,000 crore. So Bharat Mala Pariyojana is very, very important for you. Now another scheme which was in, uh, initiated by the central government in 2016 is what is called as Sedu Bharatam program. Okay, you basically can ask what is this Sedu Bharatam program is all about. Again, so from the term itself you have to get some, uh, say this is a separate program which is launched for bridges. <clears throat> so this is a program for constructing rehabilitation and widening of 50,500 major bridges. So this scheme is for bridges. This scheme is for highways. Bharat Mala Yojana for highways. Sedu Bharatam is for bridges. Bridges like major bridges, 5,500 major bridges, they will be constructed or rehabilitated or widened. Then to 208 railway over bridges. So it includes railway over bridges, major bridges, railway under bridges on national. So railway over bridges and railway under bridges on national highways as well as 1500 major uh, bridges. So just have an idea, this Sedu Bharata program is about construction, rehabilitation and widening of uh, bridges, ma mainly the major roads, sorry major bridges as well as uh, the railway under bridges or railway over bridges on national highways. So these two programs are very important. Now we will discuss the most important topic under the road sector. There is a high, very high possibility that you may get a question on this hybrid annuity model. Many times this topic have been come in the news. So first we will see that what is this hybrid annuity model. So this is a model for developing uh, road sector in India, mainly national highways and expressways. Okay. So this model, hybrid model, okay, hybrid annuity model is a combination of two models. So this itself is a very important point. So it's a combination of two models that is EPC model, engineering procurement and construction model as well as BOT annuity model. So since it is a hybrid model, so it is a hybrid model consisting of two models. One is EPC model, engineering uh, procurement and construction model as well as BOT, this word is very important. It's not BOT model, it's BOT annuity model. So it's a combination of BOT annuity model and EPC model. So that's a very important point to be noted down. Now we'll see that. So before going to hybrid annuity model, we, you need to have an idea what are the features of this engineering procurement and construction model. So under the EPC model, so under the EPC model, the private players, what they do is, so just understand that what they will do under EPC, engineering, project and construction. So, so the private players will do a function of till constructing the road only. So they will construct the road and they have no role in the road ownership, toll collection or maintenance. So under the EPC model, the private player 
will do all the engineering, procurement and construction work. After that, it will be handed over to the government so that they will have no role in road ownership. Road ownership will be with the government. No toll collection will be done by the government as well as maintaining the uh, roads. Okay, so National Highway Authority of India pays the private player for constructing the road under EPC model. The, so the government will be the full owner of the road under this model and takes care of collection as well as maintenance of the road. So from the term itself, EPC itself, you can understand the concept. Now regarding the BOT model. Now regarding the BOT model, what so that is what is that? Build, operate and transfer. The private player will build the road, they will operate it and finally transfer it to the uh, government. So BOT model is also two type. One is annuity model. So we'll discuss that. Okay, so first understand what is this BOT model. So under the BOT model, private player have an active role, role in road construction, not only in construction, but also in operation and maintenance of the road for a specified number of years as per the agreement. So under the BOT agreement, which sign, which is, will be signed between the state, uh, so the, by the sender as well as the private player, the, the number of years for which this the private player can operate as well as maintain the road will be mentioned. So after the completion of the years of operation, the private player will transfer the asset to the government. Okay, So that is what is called as, again, very easy to remember. Under BOT, private player will build it, they will operate for a certain period of time and finally transfer to the government. So that's the BOT model is all about. Now we'll see the, what is the under BOT model. Okay, so there are two types of a BOT model in, in relation to road projects, that is BOT tall model and BOT annuity model. BOT tall model and BOT annuity model. And now keep this in mind, so in hybrid annuity model, it is, it has the features of BOT annuity model, not tall model. Under BOT, the private player, so this is the biggest problem of BOT model. The private player how to arrange the full finance, all the finances for the project, okay. So under the tall model, the private player will collect the tall revenue. In the annuity model, annuity fee will be, uh, toll will be collected by the government, but an annuity fee will be given by the government to the uh, private player and in the annuity model. So here the revenue is through toll, private player will collect revenue through toll. In the annuity model, the central government will give them the uh, annuity fee. So in the BOT annuity model, the toll revenue risk is with the government. Okay, be very clear, okay. In the toll revenue model, the risk, toll risk, revenue risk is with the private player. In the annuity model, the toll revenue risk is taken by the government. Now the government pays private player a pre-fixed annuity for construction and maintenance of road, okay. So for constructing and maintenance of road, a, a fixed annuity will be paid by the government in the BOT annuity model. Now, now by knowing the both the features of EPC model and high, uh, this BOT annuity model, HAM combines both the model, okay. So HAM has the features, 40 percentage features of EPC model and 60 percentage of BOT annuity model. So in the high hybrid annuity model, what happened is, very, very important, okay. National Highway Authority of India on behalf of the government releases 40 percentage of the total project cost. So this is the advantage of hybrid annuity model, okay. So in the BOT model, the entire finances have to be arranged by the private player. But in the hybrid annuity model, 40 percentage of the project cost will be given by the central government, but mainly by the National Highway Authority of India on behalf of the central government. So the 40 percentage of the total project cost will be burned by the uh, government. Okay, rest only 60 percentage have to be arranged by the, the private player. Okay, the so 60 percent will be arranged by the developer. Okay, and try to understand that this, uh, it will be given, the National Highway Authority of India, this 40 percent will be given in five tranches, depending upon the milestone in development of the road. Okay, now the developer, what the developer now normally does is, he, 20, only, he only brings 20 to 25 percentage of the project, project cost from his own equity, rest he arranged through bank loan or through debt. Now, the, it's see, now we know what is this BOT model. Now it's talking about this BOT tall model, okay. So the problems of BOT tall model, okay. In the BOT tall model, which was there in the earlier case, the pli private player did not show their willingness to invest. In BOT tall model, private players were not interested because the first, they have to fully arrange the uh, full project cost plus the tall risk vested with the private player, okay. So this have affected 
uh, the see the many rod projects private player which is uh, having high debt is those private player which followed this BOT toll model okay they never got the expected revenue through tolls okay uh, toll collection so the because of the uh, so what happened uh, the bank already the high NPA uh, riddle banks were reluctant to lend to these BOT toll model projects okay because this model does not have any compensation structure such as annuity in the annuity model an annuity fee will be paid by the government such type of thing is not there in the BOT toll model so the developers find it uh, and means what happened is the entire risk in low traffic projects was borne by the developer or the private player so here lies the essence of ham model okay so in the ham model since it is having so uh, what is the feature so features of ham model is that it first there will be an annuity fee will be given to the developer 40 percentage of the project cost will be borne by the government okay so the essence of ham model arose due to the requirement of this better financial mechanism where the so what happened in the ham model is that the risk will be spread between the developer and the government now how the risk will be spread project cost 40 percentage of the project cost 40 percentage of the project cost will be bared by the government as well as uh, since it is an annuity model the tall risk vested with the sender in case, case of ham model so this have been highly successful okay most of the rod projects has now been uh, the bidding has done through ham model and it have been successful in the recent uh, the year after funds this ham model have been introduced and the minister of road transport is now uh, trying to uh, develop almost all the road uh, especially the national highways through this hybrid annuity model only so because of the successful model there is and since this model have been in use for consecutively in, in the, the 2017 as well as in 2018 expect a question on hybrid annuity model so revise these points uh, and if a question comes this is more than sufficient you can easily answer it okay so be very clear what does this have model is all about so that's regarding uh, the uh, first part so here we have given more importance to road the next part uh, will be coming with the other infrastructure sectors thank you